Hi, welcome to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be sharing some of my best homeschool finds of 2022. So if you enjoy this type of content and other homeschool content, remember to subscribe and let's get into this video. Okay, so I was slightly hesitant to make this video. I started making a list and I'm like, I just don't have that many things to share because I just don't get that many new things. You know, usually we were kind of in a good groove with homeschool last year, so we just didn't try a whole lot of new things. So. The list is a little bit short, <laughs> but I talk a lot, so this video probably is not gonna be as short <laughs> as the list. <laughs> but we're gonna work through this list a little bit. So the first thing that I thought of was diamond art. And I know a lot of people have heard about this. There's probably still a lot that haven't. And so basically you get these like sheets right here. It has a film on it because it's sticky. And then there's all these teeny little pieces. That's what all this is filled in with. And you use a little tool and you put them on, put all the little diamonds on. And this one, my five-year-old did. We got these for Christmas. And so she did this as if she like finished schoolwork or if she was bored or things like that. These smaller ones, we actually will use for bingo. Like when we play scripture bingo, they'll get these as some sort of reward if they want. There's a whole bunch of options. And so sometimes they pick these ones. These are like Harry Potter ones, I think. And then we have some just other random ones. All these are from Amazon. And my mom was actually the one that introduced us to these. She had a big one when she came on in January of last year because she watched my kids when I had my baby. And so she was sitting here working on it and then she ordered some for my kids to work on and they enjoy it. They go through waves of really doing it all the time. And my oldest, who's 11 now, and my five-year-old are the ones that actually enjoy it the most. But they'll sit down for hours sometimes and do it and then not touch it for a few weeks and then come back and do the same thing again. And so it's just been a really good, it's a good like extra, like if they need something to do, if they're just sitting and listening, even in homeschool, if you have really fidgety kids and they're in your reading or something and they need something to do with their hands, it's a really good quiet task and people really like it. I haven't personally done any of them because I just <laughs> don't have time to sit and work on something like this. I'm usually doing a billion other things but it's very therapeutic for a lot of people. Okay, the next thing is our morning basket cart and our art cart. And I actually made a video of doing the art cart, so I'll link that down below. And those have been so helpful. Before, I kind of put morning basket stuff, there's a bin behind me, this like metal bin, I put some of the stuff in there, but we were getting too much stuff that we are doing now that my kids are getting older and there just wasn't enough room in it. And so I saw a lot of people that use carts. And originally, so if you watch the one with our art supplies in it, the video, I use the Michaels carts and they kind of have separate legs at the bottom. And I don't know if we put too much weight on them. I don't think so, but mine just kept splitting and they break at the bottom. And so I found some on Amazon that I really liked and I got them in white and they roll really, really easy and they're very sturdy and I haven't seen any problems with all the stuff we have in there and they have a little handle and my husband always jokes around that it's like how I'm gonna be when I'm this little old lady, which you know he already thinks that I am because I'm older than him. So, so I'm always gonna be an old lady to him, but just all in good fun, obviously, but they've been really, really awesome because then with morning cart, I can just have everything sitting by the table. I can grab things when I need it and it's very, very simple. And then for art, it's been so nice because before our art supplies, like some watercolors here, some like just their normal paints, whatever those are called, the washable paints, for them we're in a different spot the brushes are here it was like a chore to get everything out like to get all the paper out to get the brushes and now everything's in one spot and so if they want to do an art project or if we need art supplies for something or for like our good and the beautiful curriculum they can easily just go to the cart and pull it out and get everything they need and it's just made life so much easier and so i've really loved that improvement in our homeschool in 2022. okay the next thing is the charter school we are now a part of 
And so for like three years, I think we were part of a local charter school, but it was based two hours away, but they had distance learning programs. And they started here, like we started it the year they started in the area we live in, if that makes sense. So they were only here for three years. And I think it was hard because we were like the furthest location from their base school. And so trying to supply staff and get people and all that was kind of hard. And then to check in on the school was hard. And you know, they're using like either local schools or rec buildings or things like that, that aren't being utilized or community centers, I think was one of them during the day. And that's where they do school. So it was like one day a week and my kids would be gone like all day Thursday. And then sometimes they'd have field trips throughout the week and it was a lot of fun. We enjoyed it, but last year they were like, we can't have our program there anymore. And so we were, I had heard a lot about my tech high, which I think is only in Utah, Idaho, maybe, and Oregon, I think. There's probably similar programs in a lot of other states. I'm just not familiar with them, but I knew I had a lot of friends that participated in it. So it's like you're enrolled in public school, but you're not, you know, like you're part of a school district and all that kind of stuff. But it's not like we're going to public school and it's all online and it's still very open to, you can pick whatever curriculum you're using. They'll reimburse non, they'll yeah, reimburse non-Christian or non-like, church, you know, curriculum and stuff. And so most of our curriculum itself is not reimbursed because we use the good and the beautiful, but they will pay for, they have like a tech allowance. And so if you have like a cheap laptop <laughs> or something you want to get, or like a um, Amazon tablet, whatever it is, I don't know what all these things are called. Obviously we don't use all of them. <laughs> and stuff, or you can use that, like we got a sewing machine, like I have a really expensive sewing machine for me, but I got, I was able to use that allowance for a sewing machine for my kids to use, I don't have to worry about them breaking my super expensive one. <laughs> and so we were able to use it for different things and then they have an allowance for their certain subjects, so math, language, arts, all that kind of stuff, and you can use that to buy curriculum within those different categories. And it's really been nice. <laughs> and all you have to, like you just send in a short like report every week, like did they participate in these? And you click yes or no. And then just like two or three sentences about what they did for the week uh, on whatever topic you wanna pick, you know? And so it's very simple. And then my kids have also been taking classes through my tech high. So they're like technology classes. And so one of my kids has been doing uh, animation. I was like, what has he been doing? And so he does animation. I have a, my daughter's doing a robotics class. So it's like with the, we do Lego software and they send this stuff to you. It comes out of one of the allowances, but you're not paying anything out of pocket for it. And so they sent us all like the Legos for the, we do stuff and the animation tablet that hooks up to the computer and the software program that they use for that. And then my, um, my, what is the second grader does rocketry type stuff. And so they sent all the supplies for that and he's gonna start getting into where he actually launches rockets because they've just been doing a whole bunch of like stomp rockets and like the squeeze rockets and some different experiments. And so now he'll be doing those types of things. And then my kindergartner, it's this like math language arts and then her music lessons are paid through that program as well. And it's just been really nice. It's nice also just to have, okay, we can do this and I don't have to try to figure out how we're gonna make it work in the budget because we can just pay, like they'll pay for it and reimburse us. Like we pay for it and then they reimburse us if that makes sense. So if you have something like that available, again, like we have very little accountability to them. And so I feel like we're reaping all the benefits and not really having to do much. And so that's really nice. But yeah, if you have access to something like that, that might be a great thing to start for this year because it was really good for us to start that last year. And then the last thing I wanted to mention is a really good homeschool find of last year was the Good and the Beautiful Language Arts. And I know I just did our like mid-year curriculum review and talked about this. And I know people have mixed feelings about this as about everything, you know? <laughs> but 
I have really, really liked this. We started it a year ago. It was either January or February-ish of last year. And it has been working very well for us. So before we were doing, like we had a separate reading curriculum, a separate spelling curriculum, separate grammar curriculum. Like just, I feel like we were kind of all over the place. And then we started doing the good and the beautiful language arts. And it was so nice that everything was in one spot and everything related to each other. Cause I feel like that was one of the hard things is some of the other curriculums, curriculums didn't quite like match up with each other. And so it was like, wait, they haven't quite learned this in grammar or whatever it is, you know? And so they are ahead in one curriculum and behind in another one. And it was just hard and I didn't really enjoy it and I didn't like it. And so we tried the Good and the Beautiful Language Arts and it's been really great. I also really love how they incorporate um, geography and art, you know, and the art gets a little bit more complex as they get older. And so my kids are doing, my older two kids are doing a little bit more intense arts, you know, not in super intense, but they did like some pastel things and they're gonna have a pastels project. And then my second grader does some more like simple art things, nothing super complex. But I've really enjoyed how it incorporates all those things so we don't have to, obviously we'll have to do a geography curriculum or something more intense as they get a little bit older but it's nice exposure to geography and nice exposure to art. Whereas with any of our other curriculum, I would have had to plan all those things separately or find a whole nother curriculum. And I just don't have a lot of time to do that. <laughs> and that's not how I choose to spend my time because I'm already just so busy with my kids doing homeschool all the time. And I have lots of other things that just need to get done around the house. And so this has saved me so much time and I really feel like it's been so good and my kids, my older kids can work on it mostly by themselves now, which is again, super nice for me because it allows me more time to do other things and to help my younger kids. Okay, so those were our best homeschool finds of 2022. I know it was short, <laughs> there wasn't a whole lot, you know, we didn't drive a lot of new things and things were working well for us. So, you know, it wasn't like I was looking for new things or anything like that. And I hope this was helpful, even though there wasn't a whole lot of things to share. I hope you enjoyed it. Maybe it gave you some different ideas or you just enjoy listening to me sit here and talk to you for a long time. <laughs> and so remember to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I will see you next time.